In the stillness of America's heartland, where the Mississippi River winds through farmland and small towns, a terrifying secret lies buried beneath the earth. It doesn't rumble often, it doesn't crack open the earth without warning, but when it does, history shows, it can change everything. More than two centuries ago, this hidden fault line violently awoke. The ground convulsed, the Mississippi River flowed backwards, and church bells rang thousand miles away. Entire forests sank and the land reshaped itself overnight. And yet, most Americans have never even heard of this dangerous fault line. The fault is still very much alive, grinding quietly beneath our feet, storing energy and waiting. Scientists now warn that a megaquake could strike again at any time, bringing devastation across the Midwest on a scale this nation has never seen. Cities would collapse, rivers could shift, and millions could be left in darkness. And unlike the West Coast, this region is not prepared. Today, let's delve into the dangers of the New Madrid fault line and explore the looming threat of a megaquake and its catastrophic impact. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. In the early 19th century, the American frontier was still in its infancy. Settlers had pushed westward, forming small communities along the Mississippi River in what would become Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky. It was in this sparsely populated region that beginning on December 16, 1811, the earth began to convulse. The first of a series of massive earthquakes struck near the town of New Madrid, Missouri, at around 2 a.m. The tremor, estimated to have been between magnitude 7.2 and 8.0, shook homes off foundations, cracked the ground open, and awakened people hundreds of miles away. But this was just the beginning. Over the following months, the region was hit by two more catastrophic quakes. On January 23rd and February 7, 1812, along with hundreds of aftershocks. These were not ordinary earthquakes. They were so intense that the Mississippi River briefly flowed backward. Entire stretches of forest were submerged in newly formed lakes, including Real Foot Lake in Tennessee. Chimneys collapsed in Cincinnati, sidewalks cracked in Washington, D.C., and tremors were felt as far away as Canada. Had these quakes occurred today in a densely populated and interconnected society, the outcome would have been apocalyptic. In 1811, they were a terrifying glimpse into the raw, destructive power that lies hidden beneath the heart of America. The New Madrid Seismic Zone is a network of faults stretching roughly 150 miles across the central United States. From northeast Arkansas through southeastern Missouri, western Tennessee, and into southern Illinois. Unlike the famous San Andreas Fault in California, which sits at a boundary between tectonic plates, the New Madrid Fault lies in the middle of the North American plate. This makes its activity especially puzzling and dangerous. Geologists believe that the fault is a reactivation of an ancient rift zone, a region where the continent once threatened to split apart hundreds of millions of years ago. That rifting eventually failed, but left behind weaknesses in the crust. These weak zones continue to be affected by tectonic stress, which builds up over centuries and is released in sudden, violent bursts. What makes the New Madrid seismic zone particularly alarming is its tendency to produce large earthquakes that are felt over enormous distances. Due to the solid, dense bedrock of the eastern United States, seismic waves from a New Madrid quake would travel farther and more powerfully than those from a California quake. A major tremor here wouldn't just affect one state. It could damage infrastructure, disrupt transportation, and cripple power systems across more than a dozen. It's been over 200 years since the Great New Madrid earthquakes, but the fault has not been quiet. Thousands of small earthquakes have been recorded in the region since 1974, many of them too small to feel, but all of them important. These microquakes are the pulse of a still-living fault line, signaling that the system remains active. The United States Geological Survey and other seismological institutions estimate there is a significant chance, some studies suggest as high as 40%, of a magnitude 6.0 or greater earthquake striking the New Madrid zone in the next few decades. While not on the same scale as the quakes of 1811 and 1812, 
Even a magnitude 6.0 event in the modern era could cause catastrophic damage. One major concern is that much of the Midwest is poorly prepared. Unlike California, where strict seismic building codes have been in place for decades, states in the New Madrid region have historically underestimated their risk. Buildings, bridges, levees, dams, and pipelines in this region were not designed with strong earthquakes in mind. In many places, a powerful quake would reduce entire neighborhoods to rubble and leave critical infrastructure inoperable. If a megaquake were to strike the New Madrid seismic zone today, the consequences would be profound. Cities such as Memphis, St. Louis, Little Rock, and even Louisville could experience severe shaking. Memphis, in particular, sits near the epicenter of the fault system and has older brick buildings, fragile infrastructure, and limited earthquake preparedness. National-level exercise simulations have modeled the effects of a magnitude 7.7 .7 quake in the region. The results were staggering, over 80,000 casualties, millions left homeless, and economic damage exceeding $300 billion. Major highways and railroads crossing the Mississippi River would be severed. Fuel pipelines that supply the eastern U.S. could rupture. Power outages could last weeks. Drinking water systems would fail. Emergency response would be overwhelmed in every direction. And then there is the Mississippi River itself. A repeat of 1811's seismic uplift and subsidence could dam the river temporarily or divert its flow. Ports, shipping lanes, and agricultural supply routes could all be disrupted, adding to an already national-scale disaster. Although the New Madrid seismic zone is hundreds of miles from the nearest ocean, it still poses a surprising and often overlooked threat. Inland tsunamis, or seiches. These are massive standing waves generated within enclosed or semi-enclosed bodies of water, triggered by the intense shaking of an earthquake. During the 1811 and 1812 New Madrid quakes, eyewitnesses reported large waves surging along the Mississippi River, capsizing boats, flooding low-lying banks, and, in some cases, even pushing the river to flow backward temporarily. The violent shaking displaced vast volumes of water, creating waves powerful enough to inundate riverfront settlements. If a similar quake were to strike today, the same phenomenon could occur, but with far more devastating consequences. Major cities like Memphis and St. Louis, along with dozens of smaller riverfront communities, have grown dramatically in population and infrastructure since the early 19th century. Critical facilities, bridges, ports, fuel depots, and water treatment plants now line the Mississippi and its tributaries. A large quake-induced seiche could sweep through these zones with little warning, causing localized flooding, structural damage, and additional chaos during an already overwhelming disaster. It's a hidden danger, one that underscores just how complex and far-reaching the New Madrid threat truly is. One of the most frustrating and terrifying aspects of the New Madrid fault is that we don't know when it will strike again. Earthquakes, especially those in intraplate regions, are notoriously hard to predict. What we do know is that stress is slowly building. GPS measurements have shown subtle ground movements in the region, consistent with accumulating tectonic pressure. Historical records, geological trench studies, and paleoseismic evidence all point to a pattern of large quakes striking the New Madrid seismic zone every few hundred years. Awareness of the New Madrid threat has grown in recent years, as authorities have launched education and preparedness campaigns. Some cities have begun retrofitting schools, bridges, and hospitals, but funding is limited and awareness is uneven. Many Americans living in the region don't know they're at risk. Unlike Californians who grew up learning about the big one, Midwesterners are often surprised to hear that their homes sit above one of the most dangerous faults in North America. Though modern society often forgets, the land does not. The scars of the 1811 and 1812 earthquakes still mark the landscape. These are reminders not just of what happened, but of what can happen again. It's tempting to see the Midwest as a stable, peaceful part of the country. But beneath the cornfields, rivers, and highways, 
lies a broken and restless piece of ancient earth, one that has not finished speaking. Scientists can't say exactly when the next big quake will strike. It could be tomorrow, or it could be decades away. But the history, the science, and the silent tremors all point to the same conclusion. It will happen again.